Hey guys, my name is Alan Edwards and I'm the lead developer of Estranged and uh, we, we recently pushed up our uh, full code base to GitHub um, and I'm just going to quickly show you how to compile it with Visual Studio and some places of interest in the code. So first you'll need a Git client. Now I recommend uh, GitHub for Windows because it's really easy to use. Um, it's just a very simple interface. Um, you can just download that from windows.github.com so once you've done that, you can go back to the repository here um, and then click clone in desktop. Okay, so what you'll see is this when it downloads. So I want you to right click uh, open in Explorer. So now that will open. Let's just get rid of that. Now you'll notice these two folders. One is game, one is source. Um, the source folder has all of the C++ source code in it and the game folder has the actual game in it. Now when you ship this you ship the folder inside game not the source code. Um, so if we go into source you'll find these two batch files. Um, so if I double click create game projects I will get a Visual Studio solution. Now I'm going to open that with Visual Studio 2013. Let's just wait for that to open. I'm not going to upgrade, I'm going to compile this for Visual Studio 2010. So you'll see here on the side that we have uh, all of the, the projects in the solution. Now the ones that we're looking at are client and server. So client and server. You'll notice they both have these uh, this kind of folder structure where you have source files and this folder up here which is a strange specific stuff called AE. Now uh, this is common to both of them. Uh, the server stuff uh, has all of the server-side entities for Estrange and the client stuff has all the all of the client-side entities and UI stuff. Now, we have tried to keep this as clean as possible, but some of the Estrange classes do still live in source files. But rule of thumb, if it's Estranged, it should be in the AE folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to just do a simple modification to the menu at the minute. Now, the menu is uh, quite a big uh, change to the engine in Estrange because it's uh, a completely rewritten menu using VGUI. Um, so let's go ahead and break that down. If you see here, this is the main menu panel. Now, this is the thing that holds all of the buttons. Um, this is always on the screen. So if we go down here, during its initialization process, we have add menu panels and each panel has buttons on it. So if we go ahead and look here, we're adding the main buttons, the option buttons, the quit buttons, the save load buttons, the extra buttons, and the new game buttons to here. So let's go ahead and go to the extras menu. Because I want to make a little simple Google link on here. So let's go to a strange menu panel extras. Now if you see here, um, this code is adding all of the buttons that you see on the menu and and then it's responding to the commands when they're clicked down here. So if we look at this code here, that is just doing a string comparison. It's saying if the command is a strange site command, then go to that address. Now all this is doing here with these hash variables is looking for the localized version of this. So if we wanted a different link for a, uh, for the site in a different language, then we could just change it in our language file. Now the language file for the menu is in Estranged Act 1, Resource, and if we just search for Estranged. Now if we look here, we have a JS file and a TXT file. For all of the menu stuff, it's a TXT file. So let's open that up. So if I wanted to change this strange menu achievements, we have it here. So that is the uh, achievements menu item. And if we go down here, the achievements command, now that's a bad example because that calls the Steam API. But if we wanted to look at the mod DB command from the mod DB menu item, we can look here, just do a little search for that. Uh, oops, without the hash, and there we go. This is the uh, the link for the the mod DB page. So if we wanted to change that, we can do that in this file without editing the code. So I'm just going to add a little link to Google just to kind of show you how to use this. So let's define a constant. So Google site command. 
and that will be Google. Now, the Valve uh, graphics user interface uses these commands. That's how uh, the button speaks back to this panel. You tell it which command it's it's got to push through when the user clicks it, and then you listen for that command, and you test to see if that's your command. Uh, if it is, then you go and do something. So I've just defined this command here for Google. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and add button. Uh, we don't need to localize this because it's just a quick test. So Google site command this, and let's just make it menu slash wheel. Now that's just the image. So if we go to the uh, declaration of that, and if I can F12 this, I think it's going to mess with fraps. So if I go to the declaration, yeah, here. Yeah, so um, you see, you can add a button um, and you can tell it what the icon path is. So if we go back here, that's now menu slash wheel. So if I go to game materials, VGY, menu slash wheel, you'll see that this is actually a little wheel icon, it's actually white so you can't see it, but that's that's the icon that's used. So these are just little VTF valve textures. So um, now that button has been added, it won't do anything yet. So let's go ahead and add another string comparison. I'm just gonna copy this uh, line because I don't wanna write it out again. So there we go, Google site command. Now we're gonna do, oh, hello. We're going to do uh, a similar thing to the um, uh, the code up here, except we're just going to hard code and address it because I don't really want to uh, add a localization in here for it. So we'll just go http www.google.com. Now this open address shortcut um, here will just let's go to the declaration. That will, oh no, we want to go to the definition. Um, that will just activate the game overlay and it'll shoot off to that web page. Um, now, if you're wondering what this little L is here, the parameter of this command is a, a wchar type, a wide character type. So uh, to tell the compiler that this little snippet here is a wide character instead of just a regular uh, character array, array, we put a little L in front of it. So if I go ahead and compile this now, um, this shouldn't take too long. Now you'll very likely get some uh, compile errors out of this. So if you look here that I've got a uh, direct X header problem. So if I go ahead and have a look what that is, uh, if we go to this DX9SDK folder, we're missing a bunch of headers. Um, all you need to do is uh, download the DirectX 9 SDK and then copy the header files in. I'm just going to browse my computer to see if I've got that installed so I can show that now. Uh, is it under Microsoft? Microsoft uh, DirectX, yeah, here we go. So uh, you want the November 2008 DirectX SDK. So if we go in here, we have an include folder. That's where all the headers are. So to fix that, to make it so you can compile the shader project, you just need to copy this include folder into here. Uh, that'll fix that issue. Let's go ahead and check on how this is doing. I think it's nearly done now. Yep, it's correct the server. Linking it up. There we go. Okay, so that was our only error. That was good. So let's go back to the Estranged Act 1 folder. Now it puts all of the game's binaries in game Estranged Act 1 slash bin. So if you notice here, we've now got these uh, PDB, which is debugging symbols that lets us start up the engine and uh, kind of use breakpoints and look at with, uh, what variables mean while the code's running. Um, now we've also got new DLLs here. Uh, these other files are the uh, kind of equivalents for Mac and Linux, but we're not gonna we're not gonna cover that in this video. So if you look at these DLLs, um, that's what we've just compiled. So what we need to do now is run this. Um, so how we're gonna do that? Well, this is a mod. 
Um, even though A Strange Act 1 is a, a kind of a full uh, standalone Steam release, if you like, this a version on GitHub is wrapped up as a mod. So if we go ahead and go to my Steam folder, Steam Apps, Source Mods, um, there's nothing here at the minute. Um, but what you can do is you can either copy this, which I think is, uh, it's it'll work, but it's not my, uh, not the way I do it. Um, you can paste that in there and this will work. Or you can download uh, the shell extension, which I've linked to in the video description, which lets you create a symbolic link. Now, if I go ahead and drop here a symbolic link, the extension allows us to make a, a kind of internal window shortcut. Now, this isn't like a regular shortcut. This isn't like me going create shortcut, um, because that's like a, a file that points to that. This uh, one above it is actually a kind of disk shortcut. It'll point to this folder um, and it'll make it look like to Steam that the folder lives there even though it doesn't. So this means that when you change anything in here, so if I change that to 2, don't do that because it'll break, but if I change that to 2 it changes here as well. So if I change that back, you can see it's gone back. So uh, now I'm going to go ahead and run the engine. So if we go into library, now you'll need to reboot Steam for this to show up. So if I go ahead and click play here, hopefully this will run in a window. No, it didn't. That may have cut off fraps. Let's go ahead. Uh, hang on, just loading. Don't know if you guys can see this or not. Um, so I'm just going to slam it into a window. Game options. Oop. Uh, I want to run in a window. We'll do it at that resolution. Yep. Okay, here we go from GitHub source. Okay, so this is our uh, game. It just booted up fully. So if we go to extras now, you can see there's a Google link, um, which you can go ahead and click on, and that'll open google.com. Um, so there we go. That, that was a little simple addition to the menu. Um, now, that, uh, that will hopefully give you a bit of an insight into how to customize this menu. Um, so yeah, um, other places of interest in the code are, um, are uh, let's have a look here. We, we've customized the uh, projected texture entity a lot in Estrange. We've actually fixed the, the shader so it doesn't have a lot of the, um, the issues. Where are we? Uh, and industry texture. Yep, so here we go. There's a bunch of fixes on the Val developer page and we've basically integrated those into our code and kind of extended on that because we have uh, an entity in here in our server that you can put down. Um, we, it's good to know that we've actually rena renamed the entity env light projected because it's, it's not compatible at all with the existing env projected texture. Um, just to kind of make the distinction. But we've, we've made a, uh, a projected light manager now, this projected light manager means that when you put it down, it'll go ahead and allow uh, a radius uh, setting on the light to work, which means that you can go ahead and set a radius for the light to enable its shadow. Now, in Estranged, we only have one uh, shadowed light allowed at all times. So if you put this entity down and then set the radius on your env light projected entities, then when you move closer to a light, it will pop on and off. I'm not going to go into anything else today, um, but if anyone would like to see uh, any other kind of tutorials, maybe how to integrate this code with the Source SDK 2013, um, then just leave a comment or, uh, or email me at alan at alanedwards.com or drop a comment on ModDB or something. Just just let uh, let me know, and I'll uh, I'll try and get a tutorial recorded for you. Um, hopefully, it'll help uh, help other people as well. But yeah, thank you for watching, and uh, goodbye.